Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 7th of February. Bodo Peace Accord, a historic agreement, says PM Modi in Northeast Assam. Sri Lanka PM Mahinda Rajapaksa arrives on four day state visit to India. And Nepal inks financial closure of its largest hydropower project with India. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday addressed a massive public rally in India's northeastern Kokrajhar, a Bodo-dominated town, to celebrate the signing of Bodo Peace Accord on January 27. Calling the move historic, Modi said that it was because of people's support that the peace accord was signed, heralding a new dawn of peace in northeastern Assam province. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday thanked the people of the Bodo region in northeastern Assam province and said that signing of the Bodo Accord was a historic agreement that will bring peace to the region. Addressing a mega rally in Assam's Kokrajhar, a Bodo-dominated town to celebrate the signing of the agreement, Modi said the Bodo Accord brings to an end a problem that has been persisting for decades and marks the beginning of a new era of peace and progress. This is Modi's first visit to the province after Parliament passed the Citizenship Amendment Act or CAA last December that triggered protests across the country, including in Assam. He reiterated that CAA will not have any effect on the people of Assam and Northeast region. <laughs> आज उस जिंदगी से मुक्ति का रास्ता खुल गया है मैं न्यू इंडिया के नए संकल्पों में आप सभी का शांति प्रिय असम का शांति और विकास प्रिय नॉर्थ ईस्ट का दिल की गहराइयों से स्वागत करता हूं the Bodo Accord was signed on January 27 by Prime Minister Modi's government with four factions of the National Democratic Front of Bodoland, All Bodo Students Union and a civil society group for bringing a lasting peace in Bodo-dominant areas in Assam. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa on Friday arrived in New Delhi on a four-day state visit to India aimed at strengthening bilateral ties. During the visit, Rajapaksa will have meetings with Indian leadership, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi. India and Sri Lanka will hold talks on a number of key areas, including trade, defence and maritime security cooperation, among others. This is Rajapaksa's first overseas visit since he took over the post and is indicative of the continuous high-level engagement between the two neighbours. Esanullah Esan, former spokesperson and top leader of Tehreek Taliban Pakistan, has reportedly escaped from prison in Pakistan. Esan had surrendered to Pakistani security agencies in 2017. He was responsible for the shooting of Malala Yousafzai in 2012 and carrying out the deadly Peshawar Army school terror attack in 2014. Former Pakistan Taliban spokesman Ehsanullah Ehsan, who was responsible for the shooting of Malala Yousafzai in 2012 and carrying out the deadly Peshawar Army school terror attack in 2014, has reportedly escaped from prison. An audio clip released by him surfaced on social media on Thursday, in which Ehsan said that he escaped the confinement of Pakistani security agencies on January 11. Ehsan said, that he would make a detailed statement about the days of his confinement in the coming days, as well as about his future plans. Meanwhile, the authenticity of the audio and veracity of the Assan's claim 
was not verified by the security forces or the Pakistani government. Ehsan was involved in one of the most gruesome attacks on Pakistani children when suicide attackers on December 16, 2014 entered the Peshawar's army public school, shooting indiscriminately, killing 149 people, including 132 students. He also took the responsibility for attempted murder of Malala Yousafzai, the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner. She was shot by a gunman for campaigning for female education in 2012 in Pakistan's Swat Valley. Moving on. Daily wage laborers in Pakistan have expressed concern over the rising inflation and unemployment in the country, which have made their survival difficult. Blaming Prime Minister Imran Khan, they said goods were cheap and the poor were living their lives easily. But the present government has destroyed it all. Daily wage labourers in Pakistan have said they are having a hard time under Prime Minister Imran Khan's rule as his government has not created any jobs and made everything so expensive. They said the sharp rise in prices of daily commodities have made their survival difficult and the government is not doing anything about it. Locals in Pakistan have time and again blamed the lack of effective policies to tackle the rising inflation and unemployment in the country. रोजगार नवाज शरीफ के दौर पे शबाज शरीफ के दौर पे या जरदारी के दौर पे गरीब बंदे के लिए सही था उसको रोजी मिलती थी सस्ताई थी और उसका गुजारा होता था जब से ये इमरान खान वजीर आजम बना है बेरोजगारी इतनी हो गई है कि गरीब आदमी का जीना मुश्किल हो गया है बस आड़ी पे बैठा हुआ इधर जो एक दिन लग जाते आठ नौ दिन खा लेते कभी होते कभी नहीं होते बस जहरीला हो जाता है बंदा According to a recent report by Islamabad Policy Institute on Pakistan's performance in various areas in 2019 and future events in 2020, inflation in the country would remain high, hovering around 13%. Increase in power tariffs and higher oil prices could, however, cause inflation to shoot beyond these estimates, the report said. Top U.S. State Department official Ambassador Alice Wells said on Thursday that the United States is working to bring in Afghanistan as an observer nation to the trade and investment framework agreements. U.S. Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asia Alice Wells said on Thursday that the United States is working to bring in Afghanistan as an observer nation to the trade and investment framework agreement or TIFA. Speaking about the new U.S. Central Asia strategy at a think tank in Washington, Ambassador Wells said the U.S. is in discussions with border states of Afghanistan to set up trilateral bodies that can ensure cross-border programs for economic, humanitarian and political assistance. She said a lot of it will depend on security with Taliban or other terrorist forces not undermining these important projects. Through our trade and investment framework agreement, uh, for instance, we've uh, worked to bring Afghanistan in as an observer country. We'd like them to become a member of the TIFA. That's something we're working towards so that we can create and support a hundred million person market. Commenting on the current Afghan peace process, she said the ability to achieve peace in Afghanistan is ultimately based on Taliban's willingness to eliminate the prospect of the country being used as a platform for terrorism. India and Nepal on Thursday inked financial closure of Nepal's largest hydropower project, the Arun 3, being built with Indian assistance. India has pledged an investment of 100 billion Nepali rupees for the 900 megawatt hydropower project. Financial closure of Nepal's largest hydropower project, the Arun 3 backed by India, was inked in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Thursday. The 900 megawatt hydropower project being built in Sankhuva Sabha district of Nepal is undertaken by India Satluj Jal Vidut Nigam or SJVN, which on Thursday pledged an investment of 100 billion Nepali rupees. There are also two Nepali and five Indian banks who have committed to contribute for construction of the mega power project in the Himalayan nation. From Nepal, one is Everest Bank and another is Nabil Bank. They have come forward and come forward 
to participate as lenders for the government of this project to arrange this 7,800 crores NPR for the debt of for financing Arun 3 project. Five Indian banks, State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, Canara Bank, Exim Bank and Union of Bank of India, they are also participating in lending funds for the construction of this project. Financial closure does not just mean signing a check and giving them money, it means also on the ground support which Everest Bank and Navel Bank can give them as the project is in Nepal. With the completion of Arun 3, Nepal will get 21.9% of the total electricity produced in a year, that is 197 megawatt electricity with 86 crore unit for free in a year. The project is also expected to generate 3,000 jobs during its construction in India and Nepal together. More on news from Nepal. The main opposition Nepali Congress on Friday staged a protest in capital Kathmandu against the conviction of its Vice President Vijaya Kumar Gachadar in a land scam case, claiming it to be politically biased. Nepal's main opposition Nepali Congress on Friday took to the streets against the conviction of its Vice President Vijaya Kumar Gachadar in Lalita Nivas land scam case, claiming it to be politically biased. The Commission for Investigation of Abuse Authority had on Wednesday filed a charge sheet against 175 people, including Kachadar in the land scam case in which a large area of government-owned land was brought into private ownership and sold to various individuals in the year 2010. Nepal Student Union, the student wing of Nepali Congress, staged demonstration at famous protest zone Matigar Mandala, whereas the party also obstructed the parliament for a second consecutive day. Vijay Kumar Gachadar le galat gari ko bani Vijay Kumar Gachadar sajai ko baagi unborsa. Tara Vijay Kumar Gachadar apu ek jana matri raundi gorda akiri matri hoy na kya ma kya cabinet ka decision gorne jo jo decision making system mathe. Nepali Congress has objected over the amnesty given to the then Prime Minister Madhav Kumar Nepal and Baburam Bhattarai claiming Kachadar of acting in his capacity as a line minister. The party had claimed that the anti-graft body has been unduly influenced by the incumbent government to implicate Kachadar, a former deputy Prime Minister. The ninth edition of a joint military exercise between India and Bangladesh is underway in India's northeastern Meghalaya province. The exercise aims to boost cooperation in counter-terrorism operations through various tactical drills and procedures. A 14-day joint military exercise between the armies of India and Bangladesh is underway in Umroi, in India's northeastern Meghalaya province. The ninth edition of the Bilateral Defence Cooperation Endeavour between India and Bangladesh named Sampriti 9 began on 3rd of February. It aims to familiarise each other in various tactical drills and procedures. The main focus of the exercise is on counter-terrorism operations in mountainous and jungle terrain. Soldiers from both the armies are holding tactical operations like cordon and search, raid and house clearance drills during the exercise. The state-of-the-art joint training node will culminate on February 16 with a final validation exercise in which troops of both the armies will jointly practice a counter-terrorist operation in a controlled and simulated environment. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Bodo Peace Accord, a historic agreement, says PM Modi in Northeast Assam. Sri Lanka PM Mahinda Rajapaksa arrives on four day state visit to India. And Nepal inks financial closure of its largest hydropower project with India. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.